Hello everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer.com, we install, test fit, and review a lot of different products to help you as the customer make a more educated decision. And today I have a 2020 Chevrolet Traverse. We'll be taking a look at and I'll show you how to install the Kurt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver. You might be wanting to add a hitch to your Traverse to carry a bike rack, cargo carrier, or to tow a trailer. And with this being a two inch by two inch receiver tube, it's gonna give us a lot of different options for that use. One of my favorite features of this hitch is that it can actually be completely hidden with our bumper cover here. All we gotta do is snap it back in and engage our locks at the bottom. And it's not even gonna look like we have a hitch on the back of our car. So it's not gonna stick out like some other hitches on the market do. It's gonna look really nice. Personally, it's my favorite. With that being said, it is gonna be a steel construction, so it's gonna be really strong for a long time. It also has a nice black powder coat finish, which is gonna help resist uh, rust and corrosion over time as well. Our hitch does have a standard 5 8 inch hitch pin hole. As you can see, it fits through there nicely. Now, a pin and clip aren't included with this kit, but you can find one here at eTrailer.com. We are gonna have rolled style safety chain loops. I like the way these look. Again, we're not gonna see them every day because we have the option to cover it up, but when we are towing, it's gonna allow us to use a bunch of different styles of safety chains. Now we can go ahead and get some measurements for you. The measurement from the ground to the uppermost part of our receiver tube is about 20 and a half inches. You just wanna keep this in mind for anything that could be low to the ground, just for, that just for that ground clearance. Another important measurement is the measurement from our hitch pin hole to the outermost part of our fascia. And in this case, we're looking right at three inches. You just wanna keep this in mind for any folding accessories. That way they don't make contact with the rear of our car. As far as our weight capacities are concerned, we are gonna have a 5,000 pound trailer weight rating. You wanna keep in mind that's the weight of the trailer and the load included. It's also gonna offer us a 750 pound tongue weight rating. That's the weight pushing straight down on the innermost part of our receiver tube. Now it is a good idea to check your owner's manual and make sure that your vehicle is capab capable of towing or hauling at these capacities. You wanna go with the lowest number between the two. And in terms of installation, getting the hitch receiver installed on the Traverse really isn't that bad. The hardest part is gonna be taking off the rear fascia. Now speaking of installation, I'll show you how to get the hitch installed on your Traverse now. To start our installation, there's gonna be two plastic caps right here. We're just gonna take a small flat blade screwdriver and carefully pull these tabs out. It doesn't take much force at all. You do wanna be careful not to scratch your paint. So we'll just pull those out and let them hang there. With these two caps out, we'll repeat that same process over on the passenger side. Behind our plastic caps, we're gonna have seven millimeter bolts. Go ahead and take those out now. You'll wanna make sure to repeat the same process on the passenger side. We now wanna move down and take out this bolt here. We're gonna use a T20 Torx bit. There's gonna be one more on the other side. We can now move down to our wheel well liner. Our instructions say that there's gonna be eight screws, but there's actually only five. We're gonna have one here, one here, one here, one here, and then one right back here behind our wheel. This is gonna use a T15 Torx bit. With our screw removed, we'll set it off to the side and repeat that same process for our remaining hardware. With the bolts removed out of our wheel well liner, we now want to pull this trim piece off. This part can be kind of tough. Just pull very carefully because we don't want to break any of those clips. We now move our way up. We now want to come back and take off this seven millimeter bolt. You do want to be careful pulling out on this trim because we don't want to break any of our clips. It's kind of hard to see. It's just a very tight space to work. Go ahead and take this out the rest by hand. And we'll be repeating the same process over on the passenger side. Before we pull our fascia off, I just want to grab some blue painter's tape and go along this body line here just so we don't accidentally scratch our paint taking the fascia off. Now you don't have to do this, but I just like doing it just to protect that paint in case we were to slip 
when we're putting it back on if it's not wanting to go on correctly. Just being cautious. We are gonna have two more T15 millimeter bolts down here on the bottom. We'll go ahead and take these out and that'll release our fascia. Now with an extra set of hands, we're ready to pull off our fascia. We just wanna pull out like so. And just slowly work our way up towards the middle of our fascia. We need to disconnect our wiring right here. We're gonna pull straight back on this red tab and then push down on this black tab on the back side and then pull out. Now our fascia is released and we can set it off to the side in a safe location. We now need to support our exhaust before removing our exhaust hangers. Our instructions don't tell us to do this, but it is a good measure just so that our exhaust doesn't drop down and possibly damage. We wanna take our cam buckle strap, loop it around our coil springs like so, and then cinch it up tight. Now, if you don't have a cam buckle strap, you can find one of those here at eTrailer.com. We're going to have four 15 millimeter bolts that we need to remove from our bumper beam. We'll go ahead and do that now. The two nuts that we take off the top side of our bumper beam are going to be saved for reinstallation and the two that we took out of the bottom will not be reinstalled. We'll go ahead and repeat the same process over on the passenger side. Our bumper beam is gonna be supported by our four studs on the top here. With all of our hardware taken off, we can now lift our bumper beam out of the way. And this will not be reinstalled. We can now grab our hitch and slide it into place. It'll simply slide right in to the holes in our rear of our car. We're now ready to fish wire our hardware. Instead of feeding our coiled end through the bottom, I'm actually going to feed the back end through the top. It's going to be a lot easier to get our hardware added. Now you can see the bottom of our pull wire came out through the bottom of our frame rail. We just want to leave that there and then we can add our spacer block and carriage bolt onto the coiled end. We just want to feed our spacer block onto the coiled end of our fish wire. And then we can grab our carriage bolt provided. We'll just thread that on. Now we just want to push everything into the frame while simultaneously pulling down on the other end of our pull wire. And just like that, our bolt came through the bottom. Now we can add our conical tooth washer and hex nut. We do want to make sure that the teeth are facing up on our conical tooth washer. So now we'll just reach down here. We will simply pull our fish wire off then you just want to take your finger and kind of push to the side of our bolt here. Then we can slide our conical tooth washer on, like so. Then a good tip you can do is push that conical tooth washer over to the side just to give us a little bit more room to thread on our hex nut. We now just want to thread our hex nut onto where it's tight. We'll repeat that same process on our frontward hole here. So for this next hole, we were having trouble getting it aligned down here. The hitch was just sitting pretty far back. So what I'm gonna do is take our 15 millimeter nut that we took off for our stock bumper beam. I'm gonna put this back on and then just tighten it down. And that'll align that bottom hole. That way we can get our hardware in. With our hole aligned, we can now fish wire our hardware into the second hole. We'll add our spacer block. And then our carriage bolt and pull it back through our frame. Then we'll add that same conical tooth washer on the bottom with the teeth facing towards the hitch and our hex nut. Now we want to repeat the same process over on the other side. Now we want to add that other 15 millimeter bolt to the top side. And we'll repeat that same process on the other side. We now want to come back and finish tightening down all of our hardware with a 19 millimeter socket.
With all of our hardware on the bottom, we can now come back and torque it down. Our torque specs will be listed in our instructions. We'll repeat the same process on our other side. We're now ready to add our hardware for our uh, exhaust hanger. We're going to take our conical tooth washer, teeth facing towards the hitch, slide it onto our bolts. Then we want to lift up on our exhaust and get one of these started. You can get that other bolt started now. Then we can come back and tighten them down with an 18 millimeter socket. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. We want to make sure to come back and torque down our hardware on the front. And those torque specs will be listed in our instructions as well. After our exhaust is secured, we want to make sure to come back underneath and remove our cam buckle strap. You'll notice there's a plug right here. Before we put our fascia back on, if you ever want to do wiring, now would be a good time to do it with that fascia off. Our vehicle has a factory tow package, so we do have this option, and our customer is going to get wiring, so we'll go ahead and install that now. But you can find wiring for your traverse here at eTrailer.com. With everything mounted up, we're now ready to install our fascia in the reverse order that we took it apart. With our fascia reinstalled, we're now ready to hit the road. That's going to do it for our look at and the installation of the Kurt Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver on our 2020 Chevrolet Traverse.